I'm actually on the page just to make sure that we are live. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are? Yeah. Are we live? Okay, so <laughs> greetings, everyone. My name is Muskan CT, and I'm Team Poker Stars Pro. Welcome to the second episode of my podcast, Off the Felt. And our guest today is one of the most successful poker players in India. He has over $1 million in tournament earnings. His achievements have sent ripples through the Indian poker industry. Risen from the ranks, he's in a league of his own. Let's welcome Raghav Bansal. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> welcome to my podcast. Mm. Where are you right now? I am back in Delhi right now. I moved to Goa a few days back, but I've come back for my sister's birthday and... Uh, just to chill oh, with family wow. for a few days and go to the jungle after that and then uh, then back to go and uh, I'm going to start my um, planned study and workout routine for, before Vegas basically. Yeah, that's like, that's the most important thing on everyone's mind right now. And Raghav, your journey so far has been very, it's been commendable, I must say. You started with casual sit and goes, I believe, in college. And then you started playing on Zenga poker and you managed to turn even Zenga poker chips into your real money deposit on full tilt. Can you tell us how did we get here? Okay, so I started playing uh, when I went to university. Uh, this friend of mine uh, taught me how to play and like in the beginning obviously we were just playing like one pound singles and uh, I had no idea what I was doing obviously you know but like I've always been interested in in board games and strategy games since I was a kid like that's all I wanted to do uh, so like I had a natural knack for it I think I started improving and then uh, like there was these three friends of mine three Asian guys uh, two from Hong Kong uh, so I started playing with them we played quite regularly actually in, in, in university and um, yeah, one of them is actually, uh, his name is Jonathan Chan. So like we, we call him Johnny Chan. He was actually the best out of all of us as well. And to be honest, even my moniker, which I used that so sick, is actually his moniker back in university when he used to play on full tilt. And he was crushing back then, you know, and uh, I, I actually say the word that's so sick a lot as well. So like, <laughs> so that's it. the story yeah. behind that. Yeah, that's the story behind that's so sick, you know. Uh, and um, yeah, and then like I played on and off for a while. Uh, but like obviously I was I was a fish like you know and I just just played for fun and um, uh, when I came back from university uh, I started playing a little bit more and I started playing on Zynga actually and I was already playing a little bit on party poker and other and poker styles and stuff earlier so like I was already much better than everyone else on Zynga poker obviously and I I crushed it in a few days and then uh, I was playing on the highest stakes I remember and. Uh, Something really funny happened. This uh, random guy pops up on the chat and he's like, uh, "Hey, you want to sell me? You want to sell me your uh, your chips on Zynga?" And I had yeah. no idea that there was this market for this. Like, you know, it was pretty big. Actually, Pavan has crossed that a bunch. By the way, he made a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to and then, Pavan. Yeah, shout out to Pavan. Uh, and uh, so I started. Um, uh, so I started negotiating with the guy, and uh, like he gave me a rate, and I was kind of okay with it because I didn't really know what the rate was, right? And it was really yeah. funny because there was another Indian guy on the, on the table as well. And he started <laughs> typing on in his he's like, you need to get this much money, like, you know, he's getting this part of making me get the best deal out of this. So anyways, I, I went ahead with the deal and I, he, he, he transferred me the money. And then I made my first deposit myself. Uh, because before that, I was playing on my friend's account because I was 17. So uh, yeah. I was, uh, yeah. And then I made my first deposit on, uh, I think, Full Tilt. And then, yeah. yeah. Just uh, just went from there basically. Like I mean, for a few years I was not really ma not a few years, like a, a year or so. I didn't really make much money. It was always up and down. Like I used to shoot up in stakes quite a lot, and then like just burn it in like a few days. This happened a bunch of times, you know. But uh, yeah, eventually I learned my lesson. And uh, but were you playing it. like essentially sit and goes, or were you trying anything and everything? Everything. On like, honestly, I, played, I played sit and goes. I played uh, heads up sit and goes. I played. Six max, nine max, turbos, 15, 18 man, 45 man, 90 man. Like, I played cash, I played uh, heads up, hyper, PLO. Like, I, I did all. Like, you know, I played a bunch. And uh, it was actually pretty cool because I learned like a diff lot of different variations. And, like, you know, like each, each format of poker teaches you a different skill set, I think. So, yeah. yeah. So, your friend Tushar had a great influence on you. Tell us about him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's actually one of the. One of my first few friends, uh, apart from university friends, uh, 
uh, in India, basically that you know. Uh, so we uh, we were uh, together in uh, this organization called ISEC. And, yeah, uh, I know. You know yeah, yeah. So uh, we went ISEC together, and even Archit was there, actually. So like, can you uh, tell us the viewers uh, about ISEC? ISEC is <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I used to remember this this pitch, the ISEC pitch, like when anyone asked me, like by heart earlier, but it's been a while. But anyways, like ISEC is a student organization uh, which basically uh, facilitates international partnerships and like, you know, um, uh, they send uh, people on internships abroad. Yeah. And then we call people over here in India as well. So it's like a worldwide organization is, is run only by students and uh, it's like at least in 110 countries in the world. It's uh, yeah. they're doing a lot of good stuff. Like, you know, so I was I was very happy that I was part of that. Uh, shout out to Parth uh, for uh, getting me in that, <laughs> and um, and um, yeah. So basically, I I mean I got friendly with Ashar at that time, and he was one of the only people who was playing online as well at that time. So we were both like playing like three dollars in goals, five dollars in goals, really really like small stakes, you know. And uh, he's the one who told me he's like, dude, like there's the live games in Delhi. I'm like, what do you mean? Like people play poker over here? Like you know, I had no clue, and there was like already big stake uh, games going on. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so like uh, it just started from there and like we used to play a lot online and we used to be so happy like to win 20 bucks or 30 bucks on stars or on like full tilt or whatever, like, you know, that time. And it just w went from there and like he started taking me to live games where like I played against uh, like quite tough people actually for uh, for my first live like proper cash game. Like, you know, it was like Rishabh Chavla, Kumar Shilal, Nikhil Jain, uh, like just like all, all people who are still like crushing right now in poker, you know, so. It was, yeah. it was pretty cool, yeah. He's always been motivating to me, and like I still, I'm like he's still one of my best friends in poker right now, and uh, we still motivate each other. And like you know, it's it's been a it's been a pretty sick journey for both of us. Like uh, we we now we always use the hashtag started from the bottom. Now we do <laughs> whatever we do. So yeah, I'm really proud of how he's done as well. Raghav, when you went to the World Series of Poker for the first time, your first recorded. Um, live result was monster stack okay yeah, yeah. and then you like, ended up yeah and then you ended up final okay. tabling a tournament yeah. is that correct yeah. yeah okay so basically like my first the day i reached like at night I, the next day i played the monster stack i built a huge stack on day one which is pretty sick like for your first ever uh like foreign tournament and especially the world series. yeah then i cashed that then i cashed some small 400 dollar tournament and then my third live cash was act in my life was actually a fan table, which is pretty cool because I think it was the first one in Indian I've ever made. So that was that yeah, was nice. I it is obviously it's like you created history by becoming the first uh, Indian player to make the WSOP final table. And uh, but what did that mean to you? Was that did at that time did you realize what that meant? Like how big a deal it was? And um, what are your uh, did you get nervous playing with big pros and all of that? Um, I definitely realized what a big deal it was. Like, I mean, obviously, every single poker player in the world has, has like, you know, like fallen in love with the game by watching, uh, like, World Series of Poker, uh, like, you know, on, on YouTube and, like, you know, uh, and, yeah. and for the foreign people on ESPN and stuff. So, like, obviously, like, it was, always a, it was always a big deal. And, like, you know, I always wanted to play at the World Series. And I was a cash game player that time. Like, uh, one of my friends, Apoor, one day while we're chilling, he's like, why don't you come for the World Series? I'm like, dude, I don't even play tournaments. He's like, so what? Just come, like, play cash, just play the main event. It'll be the best experience of your life. So I, I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it. And I went for it. So it was, it was like, I obviously, it was, it was a massive deal. Like, you know, uh, about being nervous, weirdly, I was not nervous at all. Like, you know, maybe on the FT, actually, I was when they introduced us and this and that. Like, you know, and I realized, okay, this is a big deal. Like, this is being streamed and this and that. And my parents are watching. And, you know, it was, a, it was, I was a bit nervous because of those reasons. But, I think throughout the tournament, I was not nervous at all. Like, cause I didn't do, I was pretty fearless. Like no one knew who I was. I didn't know who most people was, were like, you know, I played against Ben Kenny and stuff as well. I had no clue who that guy was. Like, you know, at that time, like there was a hand where he owned me and I'm like, oh, you play good, man. You play good. Like I had no, no clue. Like, you know? like I'm Kush, man. Like, I played against so many sickos, like, and, and absolutely no clue. Cause I used to not watch that much that time. But I think that kind of helped me as well. Uh, cause like, you know, there was no fear basically, just fearless poker. You yeah, know, what's think, coming to my okay. mind is that uh, I feel like your foundation is really strong. The fact that you started with sit and goes and you grinded a lot in the beginning of your career and you, you know, put in a lot of volume when it was important, when you were building your foundation. I feel uh, you really worked hard then. And 
uh, what what was it like how did you know what to study and how like wh who did you look up to and you know because then you started traveling the world you were in macau the very next year uh, so mm -hmm. tell me about that um honestly to be completely honest uh, i don't think i've studied as much as i should have uh, mm -hmm. in, in my poker career uh, i think uh, mostly like i've become good because of just an, in, an insane amount of volume like i've always um, like you know i've always played a, like at least not recently as much but like in the beginning i played a lot like i just didn't feel like doing anything else i just wanted to play and play and play and play and like you know i, I think uh, uh because i used to not play as many tables earlier uh, i used to like focus more and like you know try to just like you get better while playing as well if you try to uh, critically th like think through hands or situations when you're playing earlier as well like you know like you you become better already so i have studied obviously like you know i've, I've, I've seen a bunch of videos uh, earlier on Blue Fire Poker, uh, which was like, I mean, Galphon was one of the um, coaches on the side as well. Uh, so I have, I have studied a bit, but not as much, I would say, like, you know, but uh, mostly I put in a lot of volume. And I think, uh, I think the one thing that taught me the most is uh, when I did, uh, like, there was a period basically early on where I grinded it up from like starting, I, I started playing like $2 buying cash games. So one cent, two cent. And then I, and I, and I beat that and I went up to $5 buying. Ten dollar buy, and I did it properly, like with bank management, you know. And I moved up to like uh, NL hundred, and uh, NL hundred was it was a little tough for me to beat. Uh, so I started moving to different sites, and um, but uh, like this has happened a bunch of times that I've done this, and like just like got greedy, and like gone up in stakes and lost a bunch, and then gone up even higher, and then just lost it all. Like this, I have lost like like eight, nine, ten years back. I've lost like made and lost thirty, forty thousand dollar bankrolls in like three days, four days, you know? And it's 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 I can't explain the feeling. It's 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 a really shitty feeling because you grind that up for like a few months. You know, you you sacrifice so much, you you chill less with your friends, this and that. And um and you lose it up and you lose it in a few days on tell. So I think those things have taught me a lot and like you know I think um like not just in poker but in life as well. Like these these lessons really like uh, make you grow as a person and as a poker player. And I think these things have really like you know, helped me in my poker career. I think. Not as much studying, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I feel uh, people who get into mm -hmm. poker, uh, they feel they start blaming the variance. They start blaming luck, and I feel like luck evens out for everyone. And especially uh, like variance is your best friend. You know, I read that quote from Jonathan Little, um, but yeah. I do believe in it because um, I mean, were you aware of your say pre-flop decisions or like all of that, or was it that you were not paying attention to your you know uh, bankroll? Because if if someone um, who's just starting out and if they they are starting their career is if there's anything that you can tell them that so that they don't make these mistakes what would that be okay so talking about variance obviously i think variance is the reason why poker is still fun you know and why yeah. poker is still a game which you can make money in because uh, variance is is the thing that makes someone who is not as good as you win in the short run variance is the thing that makes people believe that they can be actually better than they, than they actually are, you know, because it's kind of easy to blame things on variance. But um, and in the short run, obviously, there is variance. But in the long run, if you put enough volume in, like, you know, like, I mean, not in maybe high stakes, I mean, not in maybe like huge thousands and thousands of uh, players, free player fields in Vegas, I guess you cannot eradicate the variance in that. But in cash games, for example, in smaller field tournaments, stuff like variance too, for the most part, will get eradicated, like, you know. Um, uh, so yeah, Venture is a friend of ours, but uh, in terms of giving tips to uh, newcomers, I think yeah, bank management is the absolute key. Like it's the it's pretty much ninety percent of it. I would say, you know, uh, if you can if you can just resist the greed to move up quickly to get to where someone else is, or like you know where like maybe your friend has done really well, and like you know like you're like oh my god, but I feel like I'm as good as him, or I or I might be better than him, and I want to be there as well, and I want to travel the world, and I want to make, and I want I want posts from like you know like from sites like oh this guy's won, like I've won so much or whatever. If you want all of that, it's fine, like that's that's okay, but like just be patient because uh, this is a this is a huge mistake people make. I actually made this mistake for a few years as well, like you know where like the Shah and the Shiv Chav and all all of my Himanshu and all these friends. Of mine who I started playing poker with live in India, they moved up in stakes, and I and then whenever I used to play against them, like I felt like I was better than them, or at least like as as good as them, you know. But uh, they they had moved up so so much quicker than I had, and I, I just got stuck in a rut, trying to 
like get to that level as quickly as I can. That's when actually Tushar helped me out a lot. And he told me, like, dude, just calm down. Like, don't think about getting that as quickly as possible. Just focus on the process and uh, just try to make like 10,000 per day or whatever. Because I used to be live cash that time. And uh, that really changed my mindset up. And like, you know, that really um, gave me the patience to basically like, you know, grind it up slowly. And just, just, just remember that, like, you know what? As long as I keep working hard, I keep putting the volume in, play my A game, I will get there. So I think this is a big, big tip for uh, the um, for the people who are coming into poker who are maybe trying to take this up professionally. Uh, is yeah, just follow good banker management. Don't be in a rush. Be patient and obviously work yeah. hard. Like, yeah, I agree. And shout out to Tushar. Like I feel he is such an important part of your whole life. Yeah. yeah. Um, the very next year in 2016, I believe you won a title. Then you won 165k in Macau. Um, I mean, I mean, I, how did your biggest fans at home, your mom and your sister, how did they react to this? And how did they feel um, when you brought home all these titles and you know big scores? Yeah, my mom is definitely my biggest fan. Like I don't even think it's close. Like you know. Yeah. Uh, she loves it, like you know. I mean, um, yeah. They, she's just really happy, like you know. Like she knows, like I love playing poker. She knows, like how happy I am, like in, when I'm playing poker. Like she always tells me, like you know, she's like I haven't seen like many photos of you that people like these reporters and stuff have clicked where you're not smiling, like you know. Just it's just it's beautiful because like you genuinely enjoy playing poker, and, and that's how it is. Like I really really enjoy playing poker, especially live, like you know. Uh, so yeah, they love it. Like you know, um, like my mom is happy that like you know I get to travel so much because she knows that's like one of my biggest passions. Like you know, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, and uh, okay. So now you were you are also played a very big tournament uh, in Macau, which was a runner-up finish. Um, mm -hmm. how, how much did you end up uh, making in that tournament? Uh, I won three hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. But okay. like I didn't have all of my action. I had uh, like less than fifty percent of my action. So uh, a, I want to ask you: Do you think yeah. that was the right time to tell your dad that you play poker? I want to know the story behind no, that. I already, I already told them before. <laughs> that's actually a really interesting story. Please. Uh, which I said uh, during uh, the big game last week I, uh, when Shrad was uh, doing the stream. So basically, uh -huh. uh, the story behind this is that. Um, Okay, so I was already playing poker for a few years, like almost professionally, like semi-professionally, professionally. I was making a good amount of money, like you know, I didn't didn't take any money from home, uh, like since I was eighteen. Uh, and they used to wonder, like, what, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is he not asking us money? He's traveling, whatever he wants, he buys whatever he wants. Like, you know, what's going on? You know, and like I used to come back, and I used to be playing live cash that time, so I used to come back late at night, and then sleep till late. So like I think at a, I think after a point they kind of like gave up in a way like they're like okay I don't know what the fuck is going on like he used to he used to tell me okay why don't you come to my like to my office and start working with me or get a job or do something yeah. man like, like you're twenty twenty one like what are you doing like you know with like an intervention at home what <laughs> yeah in, yeah I mean like a lot of mini interventions but I was a little stubborn so like you know I should not let them get through to me basically uh, mm -hmm. but um yeah anyways so I played for a few years and then. I was really scared to tell them, yo. Like I was, I, 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 I dreamt of it, like you know, a bunch of times. Like I, like of the exact situation. I'm sitting there, my parents sitting there. I tell them they kick me out of the house, or like this. <laughs> like, this happened a bunch of times, you know. And uh, just one day, like I was just drinking with my dad at home, and uh, like I don't know, it just felt like the, like he was opening up to me, and that doesn't happen that often. And like you know, and I just it just felt like the right time that like okay, man, if you gotta do it. Ever in your life, which is a the good moment. Spot. I, just, I just like I had that moment, and I'm like, okay, Papa, just hold on one second. Okay, I, I'm just gonna come back. So I went to my room, and uh, I'd already made like a bunch of cash, uh, so which was just there in my wardrobe, uh, and uh, <laughs> so what? Just, yeah, I collected. I took a I took a, a protein bag, I put all the cash inside that, stuffed it up with cash, and uh, I went to my parents' room, and they both were there that time. And I just went and I kept uh, the bag of cash in, in the middle of the bed. And I did anything. I just stayed shut. I didn't say a word. And I like think about it, right? Like if you're my parent at that moment, like what what are you gonna think? Like so your so your backstory is that okay, this guy we have not seen him do anything work work wise for the last two years. 
and now he's keeping a bunch of cash in the middle of the bed. Yeah. Like, oh, I would just hold my heart. <laughs> yeah, you think the worst shit, like he's killing people or like, I don't know, like they're selling drugs or whatever. I don't know, so much stuff that would go through their mind, right? So I Scary. wanted that to happen because, I, yes, I wanted that to happen because I wanted to set the bar really low, basically. Like, you know, that they would be like, oh my God, he's out of hand. Like he's got, he's fucked his life up. You know, like what the fuck, who have we brought up and whatever. I wanted them to think all of that. So that when I actually tell them about poker, like they're like, okay, this doesn't sound as bad, you know, this this seems all right. So I did, and I and then like yeah, I, I mean, uh, uh, strangely enough, my dad actually quite understood quite well. I told them about only about online poker in the beginning, yeah. and my dad actually compared it to trading, which is actually a really fair analogy, and he really understood like you know what, what's up with poker, and uh, it was it was it was beautiful, but it was it's a funny story though. Of how, how no, I, I heard I heard that you were pissed off that you didn't tell him for so long because he was not that. Uh, angry as you were expecting. Yeah, yeah. Ex I actually, dude, I had thought about this like 200 times. Like, I imagined this in my head that it was going to happen. Every single time that I told him in my head, I got slapped or like I got kicked out of the house or something like that. It was never a happy fucking story. Like, you know, so when they actually reacted so well, I'm like, what the fuck? I was almost pissed off. Like, why are you reacting so well? Like, I want some backlash. Like, you know, I, yeah. you know like, the last two years I've been going and playing poker. And like you know, feeling guilty about it, and like you know, like lying about it and stuff. So um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool though. So, but like I think even though they even though they understood at that moment, they were not like ecstatic about it or anything. You know what I mean? Obviously, that and that's fair. I think like in India, that's a fair fair thing. They hadn't even heard about poker at, at that moment. Um, but like I think what gave it the most amount of legitimacy was when I finally tabled at the World Series. Um, yeah. Like Pogo Guru and other other like like whatever like you know Gasha and stuff. They started posting on Facebook, and like you know a stream was out. They were watching the stream, this and that, and like, and then what happened was that like basically like like their sisters and brothers and extended family and stuff yeah. like you know. Whereas earlier when they used to go for weddings, they used to be like, oh, what is Raghav doing in life right now? And my dad used to always have to lie about it, even though he was okay with it, me playing poker, but he could not say to anyone else. You know, he felt kind of ashamed of doing that, and. um once they started posting on Facebook and stuff and they started tagging me and then like so many poker players are like, oh my God, Raghav, we're so proud of you. I look up to you. This, that's so much stuff, you know, and my extended family started seeing that. And now it was a switch where like when they started going for these functions now, like these aunts and uncles and extended family, they're like, oh my God, where is Raghav? I want to meet him. Like, you know, I, I read about how he poker and it's so amazing and whatever. And it was, this switch was, was, was beautiful, you know, so I thank social media for that. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I actually wanted to ask you about that. That you know, how did your relatives react to it? But getting to know this story and this side is just fabulous. Uh, and mm -hmm. especially your uh, WSOP final table finish was seriously. Uh, not you made another final table, right? Yeah, yeah, that was last year. Uh, yeah, no. That was Okay, cool. No, you were on a. Um, okay, so you were on a, a high roller final table also. I have, I have this In, written uh, wrong. No. In Macau, yes, not not the World Series. In 2018, basically. Yeah, 18 and 17 in Macau. Yeah. Okay. One second. Sorry. Okay. Um. So, how do you manage to keep up with the game? Like, you know, there's so many softwares out there, and you know, poker is just evolving at the speed of light. So, uh, is, are there any tips or any things that you want to share with the viewers? Um, yeah, the game is evolving a lot. Like, you know, I felt like I didn't put in enough work in uh, 2018 and 2019. And I, I could feel the difference. Like, you know, like in 2017, I, I just felt I was one of the best players on the table wherever I played, you know. But um, in 2018 and 2019, I didn't feel like that. Especially in 2000, late 2018 and 2019, uh, like a lot of people in India especially had done a lot of work. Uh, a lot of these tables have come up and like they've been getting coached by some of the best players in the country, like Adi and Danish. You know, so like these guys have become really good, and like you know, I felt like okay, man, like you gotta start working, you know, because you don't want to be left behind the curve and all of that. So um, it's it's definitely a game which you cannot stay static in. Like you need to keep keep pushing yourself. You need to keep studying. You need to keep working hard. You know, and you gotta be just feel grateful that you're playing this game for a living, or like, and even if you're not, like you know, you can just play this game at all, and um, and just be humble and just work hard. That's that's the only way, honestly. Yeah. And you also worked with Elliot Rowe. Uh, so do you want to tell us about your mindset coaching? Because that is something in common between you and me. Like we yeah, both yeah. Um, 
yes. have uh, that coach but he is he basically really really is fond of uh, you he always always praises like how you are so controlled and you know you are always focused and you're really um, you know you have goals so tell us about that like what keeps you so motivated I think Elliot Roche in my life honestly he was he's just like I love him you know he's I'm, I feel so grateful that um that I got to uh, spend time uh, learning from him and that he, that, he sp- that he gave me a time to basically make me realize like you know whatever I need to improve on and like just like he that the beauty about Elliot Roche right like you you've done sessions with him like he doesn't actually do that much like he he's got this way of just making you talk and making you explain to yourself what's what's up and like what needs to be done and it's just it's insane like you know and like yeah he's really he's really changed um uh the way i am in life and in poker obviously but i think more in life i think he's helped me more in that than even in poker i would say you know and i'm obviously like super super grateful for earlier like you know that he yeah shout out to um Elliot, yeah, oh. and to as well. To so, like when I when I uh, when I uh, met Mark Holm, uh, my my first coach, uh, like uh-huh. poker, uh, I was playing in the three k six match with him. I I played a bunch of hands, and I approached him for coaching because he was this crazy guy, like you know, like super aggro. Like I was nothing in terms of aggression versus him, like you know. So I, I approached him like, yo, I want coaching from you, and like he's like, okay, I'll give you coaching, but first thing, talk to Elliot and get coaching from him first, you know. So, so wow. That was, that was, yeah 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 it's yeah elito is amazing i think we both share that <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, I agree and uh, I I feel that his app is also great. So those of them like amazing. those of amazing. yeah, those of the viewers who can um you know get in touch with him personally can you know for sure use the app. And yeah. uh, so Raga, what about these software? So do you um do you feel I I personally feel having a tracker is really important if you're serious about poker. But what are the other tools that you feel are very important if you're really serious about it and you know do do you, uh, do you go this is also a question by Laksh, um that do you do you go for GTO or do you go for exploitative what is your take on that so I think there's a lot of uh, softwares out there which are really good obviously like holding resource calculator calculator and file software and there's there's a there's there's heaps heaps and heaps of softwares out there so it really depends on what you uh, prefer using and what you like more you know um, uh, but um, yeah, uh, as long as um, yeah, GTO versus exploitative, it's like it's very important to know GTO, like you know, at least like know what is close to GTO, because um, you can only fully exploit someone when you know what is standard and what is um, yeah, what is what are what what GTO would do in a certain spot, like you know, what which hands it it wants to check raise, what hands it wants to check call. Or in whatever, like there's so many different spots in poker. So if you know the correct theoretical lines, then what happens is you basically can see, okay, you know, I'm playing against player A now, and you feel like, okay, you know what, this guy is not really bluffing like these kind of hands in this spot ever. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't have any like natural, like, for example, like you know, like on a king queen jack board, you know, like a lot of fish will just never ever bet like like any like non connecting hands it's just never going to happen you know so and maybe maybe gto tells you to bet a few of those you know like maybe ace 3 or whatever like in the back of flush draw so those hands are just not going to be in 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 a random player's range who's not studying gto at all so once we do understand gto and we understand that, okay this part of this this part of the range of his of like of the bluff that he's supposed to have in this spot is just never there so then we can adjust according to that and then fold more because he's not going to bluff as much you know and then yeah. It's just one of the examples. Obviously, there's a bunch of examples, and that's that's basically the uh, the difference. Like you know, so to be able to play proper exploitative, you gotta learn how to play GDO. At least like try to get as close to that as possible. And as far as uh, using like different things in game, uh, I, I just uh, in in general, I, I try to use like you know, I try to be as close to GDO as possible. Uh, at least I'm not saying I know 100% how to play GDO, but like to, to the best of my knowledge, like you know, mm-hmm. I, I will try to play as theoretically correct as possible. Uh, when I'm playing against good players and um, and uh, when I'm playing against fish or like recreational players, I, I will deviate quite a lot, like you know, because there's just no point in balancing and there's no point in using certain hands as bluffs when you just know the guy's not gonna fold, you know. So yeah, you gotta you gotta be aware in game who you're up against and what uh, strategy is gonna work best for you. Raghav, I've heard that um, you say this 
to a lot of players that when your inner voice is going against your decisions yeah it's time to reset uh can you tell me can you explain that please yeah i mean i've had so like i used to be like i mean i, I think i'm still a pretty aggressive player but like i used to be crazy earlier like mental crazy like while playing tournaments at least uh, live um and um there were a lot of moments where like you know I, like i've cut out the chips and then mm-hmm. i'm about to put it up and then like while my hand is moving towards the table is it never saying don't do it man don't fucking do it don't do it you know so like um I don't know, like I mean, this happened so many times that I've been going down, anyways. You know, so like, I mean, slowly with experience, you realize that okay, you know, like, like mostly, like basically, like whatever you study in life, uh, everything goes into your subconscious brain, and like, you know, when you're like, when we talk about intuition, basically, intuition is basically like tapping into that HUD, which is your like your poker tracker for your brain, like you know, which is all the hand you've played in the past, which is all the studying you've done, all the sims you've run, whatever, all of that is all part of it, right? And then that plus the current hand, how you feel, like all of that shit together is all intuition in in just like one massive like you know thing together. So um, yeah, so basically like I just feel like you gotta like you gotta go with your intuition a bunch because that already includes like we might feel like oh it's just a feeling, but it's not really like you know it's it's a combination of all the stuff that you already know like you can yeah you could think it out loud or you could systematically think about it, but like. What your intuition is telling you is kind of already taking everything into account, you know. So I, I'm a firm believer that, like, you know, like you should, like, mo- like your intuition will, is mostly going to be your, mostly going to be the best decision that you can make at that moment, most of the times, at least. Like, you know, unless I'm, unless a really complex spot, then you can maybe think about more because if it's a really complex spot, then you haven't been there before that much. So that means your subconscious brain doesn't have as much data about that, like, you know. So your intuition obviously might not be as correct. Because you don't have that much data to back it up, but for most of the decisions in in general, like you, it is accessing your heart, inside in your poker tracker from your brain, you know. So I think I'm a firm believer that you should go with that. And uh, like, if you do feel like you're trying to, like you know, you feel like you're making a lot of decisions against that, she's a good idea to like just like close your eyes and just take a deep breath or two or three or four or whatever, and just like you know, just just stand to yourself again, like and just, just focus on your breath. Uh, and uh, just yeah, just just reset basically. Easier said than done, obviously. Like you know, I'm not saying I'm, yeah. I'm perfect this stuff, but I try. I try to do that as I can. Um, that makes a lot of sense, and I I agree with you that we have to work on our gut feeling. Our gut feeling is actually uh, something that is uh, our knowledge, like what we know about you know a certain topic, and that's you know that information gives us that first um, you know feeling. And uh, coming to meditation i want to know like you have gone <clears throat> you're big on meditation so i want to know what what's your take on uh, poker players uh who sh- you know like should meditate and what have you done like t- give us a small example or a regime of yours um to be completely honest with you like i try to meditate more but i don't think i do it enough like you know and um uh it's i think every poker player struggles a little bit to motivate themselves uh, and, I, and I know I struggle with that. I'm very good at motivating other people, uh, but uh, you know I'm trying to do better of myself. But anyways, like my um, my uh, start with meditation was basically I went to this uh, retreat uh, in 2018 uh, in Koh Phangan in Thailand called One Land Healing Center. Like, like yeah, I just eternally grateful to those people over there. They just it's just an amazing space, and anyone. Everyone like who has some time should go and check it out. It's just, it's just magical. Like you know, it's just amazing. I can't, I can't speak enough about that place. I think like my mentor as well, uh, Fluke and Ali. Uh, they're they're like the owners of that place. It's a non not not for profit uh, place, and like you know, they just do they're just doing some amazing work. They're assets to the world, honestly. But anyways, I started uh, meditating over there, and um, yeah, it's it's really made a huge difference in my life. I've calmed down a lot. And um, it's improved my poker. It's improved every aspect of my life, my relationships with people, family, friends, everyone. You know, and um, I think it's I think it's something which is pretty much essential for poker players. You know, because we go through a lot of stress while playing poker. Like every decision that we take is is for a certain amount of money, and like you know, like we don't have that much time to make decisions. And there's there's a lot of stress that goes on with poker. The lifestyle is not very healthy because unless you're a I mean, like I know almost all the good players in India, and 
hardly anyone is fit like you know hardly anyone meditates like there's very there's a very select few people who really maintain all of the, all of this stuff and so i think it's very important as a community to try to spread the word a little bit more and like you know try to get people in this because it can really make a huge difference in in your poker and in your life because it just centers you and calms you down and uh, every decision will be better and every decision that is better like you're going to make more money you know feel happier it's just yeah hmm. Yo, your voice is not, I can't hear you anymore. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I wanted to know that um, obviously meditation, uh, that retreat was uh, uh, an advanced one. What are the things that um, like beginners can do? Someone who don't know much about it, if at home, like if you can give them a small um, practice to, you know, follow. Uh, it, it, it's not an advanced place at all, actually. It's it's for everyone, you know. And I was a complete beginner when I went there, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I still feel like I'm a beginner uh, when it comes to meditation, to be honest. But it's not it's not it's not something hard at all, honestly. There's so many uh, apps out there, like for example, Prime Mind, Elliot's app. Like you know, it's it's like meditation. You know, you can. There's so many other apps out there that you can just go on YouTube and just uh, like just type in guided meditation for beginners or yeah. whatever. And, like, just just I do, do it. Like, 20 minutes yeah i still do that too like just 15 20 minutes in a day that's more than enough just just listen to it just like you know and um yeah it's it's, it's not that tough it's, it's an easy practice to get in into your life so uh have you watched this movie into the wild i have i recently saw it yeah i i went to alaska first actually yeah and one of my friends mohit was going crazy like oh my god we gotta see the bus from into the wild this and that yeah you know but i recently saw it it's an amazing movie yeah I actually had seen it years back and I was, uh, that was the first, uh, you know, film, a thought provoking kind of movie that I'd seen. And um, so then uh, obviously you went to Alaska with a power and Mohit. Can you just yeah. tell us about that trip and all the, oh, yeah. all the adventures actually that you've done in your life um, and then compare it to the, to Alaska probably. That's a lot of questions here, but okay, I'll try. <laughs> uh, Alaska <laughs> was just insane. Like, I mean, uh, it was a very impromptu trip, like, you know, uh, Pavan and Mohit were already going to go. And Pavan came second in the closer in 2018, and we were chilling, drinking. And then he's like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, probably going back home in a couple of days because World Series is over. And he's like, come to Alaska. Yeah. And how do you say no to Alaska, right? Like, you can't say no to Alaska. So I'm like, okay, bro, I'm in. And then we went there, and we rented a car, and we just drove around for 20 days. We bought, we got, like, uh, camping, camping equipment, and, like, we just drove around and camped everywhere. And, oof. Oh my God, I can't explain to you how beautiful it is. It's just, I, I have no words for it, honestly. It's just, it's from a different planet. Like, you know, it's just so wow. beautiful. It's just raw beauty, like, you know, and it was just such a pure, pure trip. Like, you know, we just drove around everywhere. It's some beautiful food, met some amazing people, um, had insane experiences. Yeah, it was, it was insane. <laughs> And um, so now you're going to see tigers in a few days and then you've done skydiving. So which is um, which which experience you feel is a must try? Skydiving for sure. It's it's like the first time I did it twice. The first time I did it, I was obviously like really, really scared. Uh, and like my my younger cousin just like, you know, he just like flew out. No, no, no stress. No. Nothing. He slept peacefully like a baby the day before while I was like, you know, like not being able to sleep, thinking of myself at the edge of the plane, this and that. But like once you jump out of the plane, like a few seconds later, it's just bliss. Like, you know, so it's definitely a must try. Second time I did it, it was actually really cool. Like I was at the edge of the plane, like no fear, nothing, just like arms out wide, let's do this. Like, you know, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And the I, uh... I'm not again in my life. It's so scary. It's so scary, like way scarier than uh, skydiving for sure. Yeah. Even though it's like like not that high compared to skydiving, you know. Yeah. Um, I I agree. I mean, I haven't done skydiving, and I've actually cancelled a lot of times last minute. Like I paid for it at least three uh, four okay. times, and I've you know like chickened out last minute. So, but I I feel like I will face it one day. I will, uh, I will try and do that. So after listening to you, that that's your you know, highlight of adventures, then it makes me interested. Um, Raghav, can you tell me about your obsession with Messi and football and everything? Yeah. This, How this does he inspire you? 
I mean, he is just, he's just like, he's a phenomenon, right? Like, he's just a genius. He's like, it's insane. Like, I've, I've read that, you know, like when, like Messi, that, that Messi he used to even have football, even when he was in bed, like, and he was just like on his foot and he was just like dribbling a little bit with it. Like, you know, that's the kind of obsession that he has. And obviously, like, don't even say much about Messi. He's just yeah. the greatest of all time by, by a far, far margin. Like, I don't think it comes even close. And uh, like also like other reasons why I like Messi is that like he's a he's a loyal guy like you know he's he joined Barcelona at such a young age and I'm sure like every single club in the world has tried to get him but like you just can't like this he obviously would never leave like you know and actually one of my favorite footballers before Messi was uh, Paolo Maldini who was the cap who was the captain of captain and legend of AC Milan and that's how I actually started supporting Milan as well. Um, I have a, <laughs> I have something to show everyone. Okay. I know about no, your obsession. I know what you're going to show. <laughs> Guys. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> That's no, Raghav. I was going to copy Pirlo's <laughs> hair when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing a favor by not like flashing this on the screen. Uh, but like, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, I so, you actually had one of, the, uh, one of the other photos. I'm glad that it's not those ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Trust me, I know all about your obsession with AC Milan. Um, I believe that you were you used to think that you're you're an Italian player because when you used to play football, you used to fight with the referees and like you know make a shape of the ball and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Why you wanted to? What was that your big passion? And how come you didn't pursue that? Uh, Why didn't you pursue football? Yeah, no, I was never, I was never, I was never good. Like I was never a good player. Like you know, I was, uh, I, I was always a huge fan. But like you know, like I was never a good football player. Sadly, I used to play a lot, but I was never that good. You know, um, yeah. But uh, I've always loved football, and like, and, and like, yeah, it's, it is an obsession. Like it's a crazy obsession. You know, like I mean, if you see me watching Milan games, for example, it's, it's, yeah. it's like you will, you will think I'm crazy. Because like there have I've been times like we we scored like a ninety third minute goal and like I just ran around ran around my living room and like just jumped on a wall or like I don't know I've done <laughs> like, some shit like you know yeah it's it's crazy it's been like it's been, it's a long time as well like, like I've been supporting them since like almost eighteen years now you know so it's it's I'm like as a fan as well I've seen the like the times when we were the best team in the world and then yeah half the eight years have been shit so. No, uh, you were really badly picked on when they lost versus Manu or Liverpool. Like every match that they've lost, yeah. like you have had to, <laughs> your friends, <laughs> you know, have. Yeah. That happened once, basically, the, the, the Liverpool versus Milan final in 2005. Yeah. That was probably the saddest day of my football obsessive life because uh, we were 3 0 up and we lost from there. And that sucked. But we got revenge in two, two years later. And I was watching the match. In uh, in university, like with a pub full of Liverpool fans, like it was all red jerseys all around, and I was like me and these three Italians who were hiding in the corner because they were scared to get beat up. <laughs> we were the only four people who were wearing Milan jerseys, you know. So it was I we, I got my revenge on United and Liverpool, so we're good. <laughs> okay, that's that's a really cool story. Um, your friend Bart is angry with you. That you didn't call him back <laughs> to attend his birthday. <laughs> wow. wow! I trust Parth to have contacted you for this. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a bit of a ditcher, you know. I'm sorry, yeah. Parth. <laughs> sorry about that. Next time you come down, bro. Okay, I'm coming. To, I'm coming to New York in uh, July, so we'll meet then. Dude. Sorry, bro. Uh, he told me a very funny story when you guys went on a holy party, and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you had something funny to drink, and you forgot to wash your face. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you had all this like permanent color on your face. <laughs> I love that story, Raghav. I'm sorry, <laughs> I had to bring it up. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, this. <laughs> tell yeah, tell me about your DU gang. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like, um, it was like Parth, you know, you you know Parth obviously, and then mm -hmm. Mehak, Sadhvi, yeah. Shami, and Bharat. Yeah, uh, the North North Delhi gang. <laughs> uh, 
that we used yeah. to hang out. We all live nearby. Uh, mm -hmm. And what a holy story! Yeah, basically, I forgot. Um, then we were, we were at Sadhvi's farm uh, for holy, and um, uh, like we finished playing, you know, and like obviously we we, we had bang like a bunch of it. And, and, yeah. uh, and um, yeah, and I basically <laughs> basically like you know, before leaving, like I went to the washroom to like. Clean up and change my clothes. I just didn't wash my face for some reason. So, like, while everyone was like clean, by the time I went there, I still had like so much, like, like, like not like a little bit, but like proper, like holy colors all over, you know. And we were like chilling for like another eight, nine hours after that. So, yeah. yeah, that was, I was like listening to your college life and getting jealous because like there was just some amazing stories. And your friends are really proud of you, they miss you, but they say that. We're happy what yeah. he's doing because he's, yeah. uh, you know, they they are, they get to uh, take your name proudly when there's a poker discussion, you know. I know that. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, it kind of sucks, you know, like a little bit because, like, I, because I used to play so much and I just wanted to become better and I wanted to, like, be someone, you know, in poker. But then I actually didn't, like, I missed a lot of scenes, chilling scenes, you know, when I was uh, in college and stuff. So that kind of sucked. But, like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that they're proud. And uh, yeah, sure. So uh, you like to play FIFA a lot. Um, what are the other games that you enjoy when you want to get your mind off poker? Honestly, is just, it just yeah, basically, like I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with FIFA as well. Like if you beat me in poker, I'm okay with it. If you beat me in FIFA, you're on my hit list. So wow. you are the only one left on my hit list, bro. And I will get you when I come back to go off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, shout out to Guna. And yeah. tell me what makes you love poker so much? It's, um, what is it? yeah. it's like, it just tingles your brains, you know, like it's, it's just, uh, there's no like, there's so many different things you can think about. There's so many different angles that you can think about a hand from and like, you know, different ways that you can play a hand or like, you know, like different ways you can outsmart people. And there's just so much to it. Like it's just never ending. Like, you know, so it's just, it's beautiful for me and like plus I've always loved um like being I'm I'm a very competitive guy, like super competitive. Like I just I don't like losing at anything, you know. So um uh I guess that's that's one of the major reasons that I'm so competitive that I just want to win and like this gives me a chance to test my skills against other people and like you know to outsmart people and like to play better than them. And uh, I just love the competition. Like it's just that's who I am, like you know, I just love competing. In anything like in any game like you play like even taboo with me like i will like be fucking serious like you know i will like yeah just any game like i just i just i just love playing good and like winning basically yeah, yeah. No Same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me about um how was it for you when you played with your idol phil galfond you like he uh, was on your poker table and he, it was he is, he is just the most amazing human being i wish i could be like 10% of him in my life. He's just amazing. Like, he's the one who started all the coaching, like, you know, and, and like, he made coaching famous. Like, so many top players in the world, they got coached by him you know, by mm -hmm. through his videos and stuff. And he's just such a nice guy. Like, he's he's amazing. And, like, he was in my table. Like, he was a 10K 6 max at the World Series, one of the toughest tournaments you can play. And I had a ridiculously tough table. I had Galfon, I had Mustafa Kanit, I had Anton Morgenstein, and, like, two other guys who roomed with these people and stuff, like, best friend. I, I didn't know, but, like, they were all sickos, basically, like, you know. What but anyways, like, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I was obviously the the, the fish at the table, like you know, for these guys. No, but, the underdog. Um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, it was it was insane. Like, cause like I've played honestly, I've played against almost all the sickos that you can think of. Like all the best players in the world, excepting like I haven't played against Ivy. I haven't played against Nagano, although I don't think he's like at the top top. But still, obviously, he's in Nagano. But apart from that, I've played against every single person out there. Like you know, and. Um, and I felt okay about it, like, you know, like, I mean, even at Chidwick, I was scared I'm not playing Chidwick because he just yeah. doesn't fucking move. Like, he's like a rock, like, you know, who's staring wow. at you. And Mikita Blachikowski, he's also another guy who I felt a little, like, off playing against him because these guys just, it just feels like they can read into your soul. Like, you know, just these two, like, everyone else is fine. Like, even Fedor, I was like, okay, obviously, I know he's fucking Fedor, but, like, it didn't feel like, like, he can, like, literally see into my soul, where these two, it felt like that. But with Garfon, it was something special, like, you know, like, like I remember there was his hand, that the first time I played against him, and like he's looking at me, right? And I'm looking at him. I just, I'm just smiling, like you know. I just, I just, <laughs> yeah. He also like, what the fuck? Why is this guy just like, randomly smiling at me, like throughout the whole hand? 
you know and uh, yeah i tweeted about that and then like he snaps at her like he's he's just a sweetheart like like mustafa was making fun of him the whole time in a very sweet way not in a not in a, uh, yeah. not in a way but like and he's just a shy guy garfon right so he's just like smiling and just looking down like just smiling like you know yeah he's he's amazing though yeah, and, just, like, uh, such, such you know, sorry hmm? go ahead no yeah i'm saying he's a genuine very genuine honest guy and i love that about him yeah i um are there any other uh, favorite poker players except galfon that comes to mind i think right now um i would say um amadi uh why am i forgetting his name you know um one yeah edwin mudevas Oh yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he is uh, amazing. Uh, super super sick. That guy is yeah. But if I if I could be like in in the current scenario if I could choose to be like someone I would be like him for sure. He's just like too sick. Yeah. yeah. Rakhav, did you know you made the list of most eligible bachelors in the poker scene? <laughs> what, what list is this? <laughs> Okay so do you have uh, someone uh, in mind or do you like someone or do you have your eyes on someone or do you have a crush on someone No not at the moment Don't I mean, lie like, I know you I I know you like a uh, huh Semi crushes I would say but no Yeah Maybe Fatima Dimelo Yeah she's oh, I, I think your semi crush I've been having been with her for a couple of years now But yeah she's <laughs> she's pretty cute <laughs> Raga you can't get away with this question give me something yeah. Well you want names Yeah who's your um you give me names on like stream for sure So no as in as in, as in do you are you are you yet to meet someone or do you have someone in mind is my question <laughs> I don't have anyone right now but uh yeah. there's a there's a couple of girls uh but not from poker industry though who Yeah work kind of close a little bit i would say but not really nothing more than that at the moment mm. you know yeah like, like you know how some poker players are like i will only date a professional poker player like i only she can you understand me we don't have, <laughs> have so much choice in india to be honest you know so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can you, you can <laughs> Okay and then um you're moving to goa and you're going to be here for a few months or a, like yeah, a year a or two two and a half okay. months yeah so uh do you want to like tell me why are you taking such a big step and what made you take it and what made you you know do this and move out for poker and finally do what you want i think uh, pollution and uh, traffic <laughs> i think were two big reasons yeah. in delhi 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 is, is pretty and inhabitable like it's just uh, it's, it's just, i don't know i don't like delhi at all anymore like it's just i think it just feels like the whole city is on tilt like you know you step out <laughs> everyone is on tilt 24/7 i know, had like, a crazy road rage that day with no, the woman bro like when some aunty just showed you the middle finger right for no reason like it was it was so bad that like i actually thought that she, like and then I, i and i actually like parked the car and i thought to myself that like, why is and then while this fight was happening there was a guy honking behind me like non stop that you know like, yeah, <laughs> and i was just yeah. like So I'm um, yeah I'm I'm sick of Delhi to be honest at least for now and uh, I wanted to like I've never lived alone apart from university which doesn't really count as much because you're, you're with friends and this and that uh, so I've never really lived alone and I wanted to try that out and uh, I know that Delhi is not a long term solution for me so that's mm-hmm. why I, I thought I'm gonna move to Goa for two and a half months I know I mean there's a lot of poker players there already I have a lot of friends there so it just seemed like the right fit you know so to go there and just uh, prepare for the World Series and, and stuff yeah. Oh uh, Raghav is there anything that you want to add to players who are going to be going to um any live okay. series abroad and you know who want to travel travel to all these live destinations is there any step by step uh, guide or anything that you want to any points that come to mind Yeah I think uh, the biggest um uh, the first and most important thing obviously is like I understand that you know like tournament poker is 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 a bit about the glory like people might not admit it but it is like you know like there is at least a small percentage of it which is about the glory and about the fame and this and and that's fine like okay but like it's important to take it slow as i said earlier as well like to not like you know get like a big score online 
of let's say 20 yeah. lakhs and then just like yeah. pump in 10 lakhs into one series. You know, that's not a good idea. So mm-hmm. I think it's important to be patient and don't be in a rush. Like your time will come. You know, just trust the process and go slowly. And uh, once your time comes, you you'll be better prepared to do it. Like if you go with uh, without following banker management properly, if you go and gamble, you know, like it is gambling then basically. You know, and um, you're not going to be comfortable playing over there. You're not going to be able to do your best. You're not going to be able to abuse I the know. bubble, for example, as much uh, because you're a little scared. Okay, I want to at least cash this, that, like maybe in the FT or whatever. Like there's so much stuff to it. So banker management is huge and just don't be in a rush. And I think the second most important thing is like while you're out there, I, I understand your friends are going to be there as well. And like, oh my God, we're in Vietnam or we're in Vegas and this, that, whatever. Like, you know, let's go out party and this and that. But like you gotta remember that this is this is fucking work, yo. Like this is work work for you, you know. And you're you're putting in a decent chunk of your hard work that you've put in into poker and all the ups and downs and emotional swings and all the stuff that you've sacrificed, all that stuff you're putting in to a live series when you go there, you know. And you don't wanna just fucking go out and party till six a.m. and then go and play day two the next day. It's just a terrible, terrible idea. And you're you're not you're basically disrespecting yourself when you do that. So it's very important to structure your series in a way that you give the utmost importance to the tournaments first that should be the first thing in your day like that's the everything else goes around that like what time you eat if, if you have a drink or not everything goes around that and that should be the main goal and i think uh, the the mistake people do is that if they go for 10 day series they go for 10 days only because they're like, oh, you know why why should i go 15 days i'm going to spend more on accommodation this that whatever but it's so much better to, if you're going for a 10-day series, go for 15 days instead. You know, like chill post the series or chill pre the series and only chill that time. And when you're doing, when you're playing series, just play and just focus on playing. You know, chill with your friends, obviously. I'm not saying like just just be a nerd, like, you know, but like, like uh, but you got to make sure that that is the number one priority, you know, and uh, just chill around the trip. And that's, that's a much better idea. It's better for your EV than if you're happiness, you make more money, all of that shit. So this is, I've seen, so, like I have been traveling uh, since down 15 uh, in, uh, to live tournaments, live series, and I've seen so many players come and go, and I, they don't even exist anymore. They busted their roles; they're they're not even there, you know. And so many young cocky guys come up, and like, you know, they're trying to be cocky with the other established pros, like me and like Dhawal and all these guys, and like you know, they're just being cocky, and like they feel like they're the shit because they've got a few scores online, and like like we've been doing it for a while, you know. Like we just like try to like give them good advice, but like. Like also feel like you know what like dude like I don't even know if you're gonna be here for in, in a couple of years you know the way you're going so it's very important to not be that story for every story like mine or Abhinav Ayer or like all the other guys in India who've been successful while traveling live there's so many that have not made it like you know that who have just busted their roles and uh, just they just no one even knows about them anymore so don't be that guy you know don't be that guy just take it slow and uh, be careful about it because this is your life this is not just a joke yeah. That's a great, great piece of advice. And I think, um, you know, you should, uh, all the viewers should really think about it and apply it somehow to the, their journey. Because it's very, um, it's, it is something that even the biggest of pros have said that it's uh, very easy to think that you're very good and then you stop working on your game completely. And, you yeah. know, so that that is something really important that you have to understand, that you have to keep putting in the work. You know, yeah, you're, never, you you're never you're never the best. If you want to do good in poker, you gotta make it a priority. It's not a joke. Like it's it's so hard. It's hard work. You know. Um. Yeah. You gotta make it a priority. Okay, Raghav. Now mm. this is the fun, fun, yeah, rapid it. fire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's get ready. Uh, yeah. Name one account that we must follow on Instagram. Dan Vizarian. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, name one person we should not be following on Twitter. Not be following on Twitter. Yeah. Someone Daniel who bores you. Daniel yeah. Nagar. Just fake. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll quickly move on. Uh, <laughs> if you win ten billion <laughs> USD, what's the first thing you will spend it on? I'll buy a house. Oh, a stick, stick house. Um, I don't know, like on the beach somewhere. Like you know, I look around <laughs> spots, like on the beach somewhere with like just open, like like four sided open 
just like <laughs> the work. I can imagine. <laughs> Yeah. But then you have to cover cover your grinding station because all the dust and sand will go in. You have to be practical. You have to you have to have faith with conviction. Come on. <laughs> okay, your all time favorite dish. Um, dosa. <laughs> That's a really yeah. rare one. <laughs> yeah, I like I like dosa, but like all time. All time for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, done. okay ordering drinks at the bar what will you order uh, beer it's, okay. it's chilled beer. out chilled out beer okay um mtt's or high stakes cash games hmm. if it's if it's hold'em and it's really deep uh really deep cash games live i would pick that i think but yeah. if it's not deep and live uh then i would go for mtds mostly yeah but i, I don't think I've, i mean apart from obviously the thrill of like going super deep in a tournament like F, ft and stuff like there's on a regular basis like there's nothing as as good as a like a, a good deep live holding cash game for me so that's just it's just pure poker i think you know yeah okay uh i'm that's fair enough. Uh, I'm curious to know what would you do in this situation? Let's assume someone owes you money for a very, very long time. Okay. And they have been ignoring you. They've finally blocked you on social media. Uh, mm. Now you're playing a tournament like six, seven years later and they get seated right across you. What's the first thing that you'll say to them? This has actually happened, by the way. It's not like. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> A random situation <laughs> happened more than once. Okay. Like, what was? What did know, you say? What was the first thing? Like, what's up? No, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna like, be like, yo, what's up, bro? How you doing? No, <laughs> but like, you kind of like, there's there's shady people in this industry, you know, and like, people just lose all sense of ethics, and uh, there's not much. There's not much you can do. After point, oh, what would know? what would be the ideal thing to say? I I just assume like I am curious to know, you know, because like know, man. hope you're hope you're enjoying my money. I guess like I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay, fair enough. Um, okay, now you know that game I play, right? Uh, knockout. Okay, knockout steak. Knockout. Or... Yeah. Knockout steak in what sense? And... Like, knockout. Like... Okay, so so basically, you want this person to be knocked out of the tournament. Or you okay, basically no, no, no. you will knock them out. You have the okay. the the power to knock them out, um, okay. and then one p- player that you're gonna be playing heads up with, and one player that you're gonna stake, you know, for a okay. like say okay. anything. Uh, the three okay. options are uh, the great Mr. Dhabal Mudgal, okay. uh, the superstar Aditya Sushant, mm-hmm. and the dashing Pavan Bansal. Okay, this this one is really easy. I would stake Pawan for sure, because he's the most like legit. Like you can trust your money with him. I would knock out Sushi. I would not want to play heads up with Sushi because he's crazier than I am. I think, and I, so I would I would play heads up with Dhawan because we played a bunch and like you know we know each other's games. And I think he's he's like I think I played like way more heads up, so I would be comfortable in that situation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like that answer actually. Um, yeah. Your favorite well, movie? I knew she was going to be part of this. These this three, I just knew that. Like, okay, cool, why. cool. Okay, <laughs> fine. One second, I'm going to change this up for you. Okay, uh, Dhawan, yes. Kartik, Ved, or Shri Harsha? <laughs> I would knock out Shri Harsha. Uh, okay. <laughs> why? Actually, uh, I, <laughs> I would love to take Harsha as well. Uh, I think the heads up stays the same, and uh, uh-huh. I would. Yeah, I think I would. Uh, I would stake uh, stake uh, Harsha and uh, knock out Karthik. Yeah, knock out. You can make me a millionaire. You know, <laughs> I do, but like even Dhawal can. But I think I would pick. I would pick Harsha. I think. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, your favorite movies in like ten seconds. I don't watch that many movies to be honest, but like off the top of my head, Twenty uh, One um, Rounders and uh, this movie called Four Lions, which is not actually that famous, but it's mm-hmm. fucking hilarious. Everyone should watch that movie. 
Okay, yeah. I'm gonna look that up. I haven't seen that movie. Yeah, um, you it for sure. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Netflix or FIFA? FIFA. No, oh FIFA. my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Fill in the blanks. If you weren't a poker player, you would be Dash for a living. Um, a therapist. <laughs> And not therapist I mean, or like, what? Therapist, like like counselor or something. I think you no know, motivator counselor. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah. oh, wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. What was the question again? What I would be like? What I want to be, or like what I could be? If you want a or, poker player, realistic, like realistically, what would you be? If you want answer, a poker, if you want non-realistic answer, then I would be a football manager. You know. That's oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, realistically is what I said. I think that I could still do this potentially in the future. I think I am gravitating more towards this as the years go by. You know, you would be one of those managers who's going crazy. Like, you know, those aggressive <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can imagine. My head out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if you could take... Oh, oh, okay. One poker player you would never share a room with. Never share a room with. <laughs> This is easy. I'm a gen. You can't sleep with me. But yeah, there's, there's been times when he's been like in like 10 rooms across me in Macau and I can still hear him like snoring, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he sent a very serious question for you. He's like, Raghav, why are you so cute? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you find me cute, bro. <laughs> okay, one favorite poker destination. I mean... As a destination overall, Vegas. I mean, overall, I would say Barcelona. But uh, just in terms of poker, Macau, because like I've always done really good there. Like most of my earnings are in Macau. I love the recreational players in Macau. Suits my style a lot. Oh my god, I've never been. I want to go. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, WSOP main event champion or Triton million champion? Dude, this is the easiest question ever. Obviously, WSOP main. It's everyone's dream. It's every poker player's dream to be the WSOB main event champion. Yeah. Even though you're getting more money in the Triton Million, you will still want to be think, a WSOB yeah. main champ. Yeah, sure. it's not okay. Uh, yeah. Your favorite female professional poker player? Mm. I would say... Um, Oh, what's that? What's her name? <laughs> Who's the Winamax pro, yo? The French one. Um, yeah, she she's amazing. Gail Borman. Yeah, she's amazing. Like I chill with her a little bit in Macau as well, and yeah. in Vegas, she's just a sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, wow. I yeah. I mean, I I played with her once at the ladies tournament at WSOP, and it was a lot of fun too. Yeah. I actually pulled a bluff against yeah. her. Oh. Yeah, she snap folded. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, the funniest like, can you share like one funny incident that happened to you at a poker table? <laughs> um, so basically, uh, Dhawal knows this one, uh, he was there when this happened. So basically, uh, I was in Macau, mm -hmm. it was my first few trips in Macau, and like, you know, I'm always a little fussy about how much space I get at the table to sit in because it's a long line, right? You know, and uh, so I don't know, I'm always like super, like, oh, you know, like, you more space. And, like, it's always like a, a thing for me, like, I need to be <laughs> You're one of those guys <laughs> who will tell me, you're one of those guys who will be like, uh, you know, like my uh, my legs are, I mean, I, I mean, they just somehow don't fit between under that. So like, I, I'm always like touching someone or doing something and they're looking around like, who did it? I'm always like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then, you know, my new thing is like, when I sit down and it's a really squishy table, I'll sit down and be like, uh, you know, if I've already started like hitting the person next to me, I'll be like, it's okay, get used to it. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> like, you know, this is gonna keep happening. I don't wanna keep saying sorry to you. <laughs> and then I keep yeah. I keep blaming the other person. I'm like, five has to be in front of the dealer. Come on, move everyone. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sometimes I have picked so many fights for no reason, like you know, just because I know you're one centimeter more to the right than you should be and whatever. 
you know. Yeah, so, so what happened? Tell me. So basically, yeah, I was in Macau, right? And like, there was this like uh, this this Chinese guy, like 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 maybe like forty or fifty year old guy on my left, and like he was he spread his legs out properly, and he was sitting. I was sitting on seat one. He was sitting on seat two. Right? And he was spreading his legs out sitting. And I'm like, dude, I don't have any space. And like, he doesn't even speak English. So it was very difficult to communicate. And it kept happening. And obviously, I'm, I'm guessing I was losing a few parts as well. And like, he just would not move. And he was like, looking at me like weird. And like, you know, like, like, like being angry when I'm telling him to move a little bit. And he was just not listening, you know. And like, he was slow rolling me and shit as well. Like, all this was happening, okay. <laughs> and like, after a point, I just, I just lost it. And I just stamped his foot hard. Like, I just, I just like, yeah, I just <laughs> stamped his foot so hard. And then the flow came over, but then like you know the flow, I was like decent friend with the floor, so like they they gave me a penalty obviously, but it didn't go beyond that, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty funny, yeah. Yeah, that is a really funny one. And have you ever heard like a weird request on a poker table or during a poker session? Like what kind of request? Like it could be a request. It could be just something like you know, excuse me, can I get this? Like something really weird or some or, or like it could be anything that you that you just uh shocked to see or hear that on a poker table yeah i mean like you get like stupid questions from like some dumb americans like you know when you go to the world series like randomly people will be like oh like you know so I, is it true that there's the snakes all over all over everywhere in india on the road this and that <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you going like are we going not ahead of this and and speak and you know like <laughs> Some questions are obviously, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, one song that comes to your mind if you win the tournament of your dreams. Uh, uh by Amer uh, American authors, the best day of my life. Uh -huh. The one which got yeah. used for uh, the World Series as well. Yeah, nice. Raghav, I must say you're hardworking. You are dedicated, humble and refined. And with your all your abilities and passion, you've come so far. It's really an, like, an inspiration, not just for me, but for everyone who's watching. And I hope you shine brighter in the years to come. And so thank much. you so much for coming on my podcast. And it was an absolute pleasure. It was for me as well. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. See you. Yeah. And bye, yeah. everyone. Take care, guys. Thanks. Bye.